Bright Lantern, so we all know that Meninja is the new Brave Battle Queen. We are currently in a female-led Brave Battle meta with these two females absolutely dominating any other character in this current Brave Battle meta. And of course, the main reason for that is the one skill they do have persistence, where when they are defeated for the first time, they then gain five seconds of invincibility, allow them to have one last stance, but most importantly, allow them to stay at low stamina, in which they are then doing more damage. Naturally, these two characters just have the advantage against any other non-persistence character. Kind of like invincibility when that was first added to the game on the fifth anniversary. It's a toxic skill, but I'm not going to let those characters, those skills ruin my fun when playing in Brave Bats. And that's what we're here to do today, right? Right? As you saw in my most recent Enderman summons, we didn't get Mininya. I don't have it on my team, but that's not going to stop me from beating teams with Mininya. But it does come at the cost of having to have an even more worked on team. You have to do the extra legwork, the extra mileage just to make and be against, you know, these new characters, right? And the general idea for this team is we're going to use the Quincy King himself. We're going to use his powers to zap away the life out of Mininya. So the way we're going to do that is that, of course, we have him full defense, right? That's very important. These new characters have a high damage output, and the idea is that we have too much defense where they can't do damage to us. So we have Yuha Max Transcended, three-star defense with low stamina and also attacker's bonus abilities. We're giving him three accessories that are increasing his defense to the max. And then we have three DR Soul Traits, all 20%. We've also worked on Transcendence on each individual character, giving us this much stats. Our other characters aren't that important, but of course, they're also doing the work to Orihime, Max Transcended, very similar build, full defense on the accessories, full damage reduction on the soul traits. The links themselves are also worked on. In her case, she has low stamina and also Pierce Barrier. And then Yamamoto, the weakest character in our team, to be fair. We have to be very careful not putting him against someone like Meninja because Meninja will easily beat this character. Now, he's only 4-5, so level 10 attack, stamina, defense, and focus. So because of that, we went full attack. Again, best accessories that we can use. And then again, once more, free DR soul traits. We've also some worked on stats through their transcendence. And then his bonus abilities include damage last three and also attack. Because usually, I put this character against Yuhan. So what we have here is Freaky Pole. I recognize that name. They're using a Yamamoto. They have a Meninja. And they also have a Chad. Now the build, maybe not the greatest since they have a Hollow Bay. But again, Meninja is going to be invincible for five seconds. So maybe it is a good build. We're about to find out. So we're going to put our Orihime against their Yamamoto. Moto, and then we're gonna stall, hopefully stall Meninja with Chad, right? We'll see how it does go. Uh, re regardless if we win or lose the fight with the other characters, let's mainly look at Meninja versus Yuha, right? How dare Meninja try and sack the... Well, she's kind of tall, though. All right, so what are we looking at here? So we're doing more damage. That's good to see. Obviously, when we get uh, below 30%, she then does more damage. Look at that. Yeah, look at that, man. That is actually crazy. And she got the debuff. Oh, no. And she's getting a bit confusing. Oh, no. We're good. We're good. We stalled enough, right? We stalled enough. That's the idea, right? With the better team in terms of transcendence, the whole strategy is just to make it a 1v3 or a 1v2 against Meninja. And hopefully by that point, the persistence will activated. Well, all we have to do is just last a couple more seconds. For the sake of it, though, I do want to try and find teams of Orihime and also Meninja. Speaking of, there it is. That's quite the high stats, though, to be fair. 39k. 39k. We can work with that, though. Let's put our Yuwa against Meninja, and then we'll put our Orihime against their Orihime, and then Yama versus Yama. Let's see how this does go. Now, we have the potential advantage of being able to get a team boost, but since there's two debuffers in the team, and if, if Meninja uses the Soul Bomb, you know, then she's applying more defense. And unfortunately, Yama applied the last raid. That's fine, though. Look at that. We activated Meninja's persistent skill. She died. It's fine, though, because right now, Orihime is in the team. Unfortunately, we're getting pushed. We just activated persistence. That's fine. Even though the confusion there shouldn't stop her. Look at that. That was a close one. We are having to put in the extra work though, I'll be honest. This is tough. This is tough. It looks like Meninja isn't enough for my team to lose unless I get kind of unlucky here. But man, she's doing crazy damage to my Yuha, even with full defense. It's somewhat working though. And jumping into our next game, we have another Meninja. Now, unfortunately, again, because Yuha's in the middle, he should activate Lacerate right against my Yuha. And that does do a bit of damage. We activated the boost to be fair. The boost is gone now because they just activated the debuff. Look at that. That's a big difference. If we're able to get the boost off. And we got the soul bomb. Okay, but if we're able to get the boost off and they don't use the debuff SA2, uh, it just goes to show how big of a difference that does make. Meninja barely even touched Yuha because we had the more stats, right? We had the extra 43% attack, focus, and defense, and they were in the negatives. Minus 33% defense, attack, and also focus. 
I will say, though, I guess the one good thing about Meninia, and that Meninia isn't actually worked on, she's 19, 19, 19 on her uh, Link's abilities. The one good thing is that she wasn't put in, like, this amazing god tier end of year banner, right? Because what we do see with Caleb is that they always release these Brave Battle characters during big banners, anniversary, end of year. And those are banners people are summoning on, regardless of the character choice, right? So someone like... Yamamoto during the 8th anniversary, people were pulling for Unahana and just so happened to get Yamamoto. During the end of the banner, people were pulling for Yuha and also Ichigo, but just so happened to get Orihime along the way, potentially. For the current end of month banner, Dom, I mean, you know, it's not a bad banner, but not everyone's going down to zero on it. It's not a down to zero situation, right? And because of that, you might not find that many Meninjas out there at least into our individual drops. And at the same time, maybe you're not going to see that many worked on Meninja in terms of Transcendence unless they got lucky and did actually go 25 steps. I know I didn't. So you can see that we beat that team relatively easy. I don't think UI was even close to dying there. And I'm probably going to see more matches like that with this particular team. But Meninja's race was kind of like... Meninja's race was kind of like Ishin's. You know, he came out end of month February, was a good banner, not really the greatest, right? Because it was a premium banner, not everyone boards. And it was only until later where Ishin started to make his mark because then he started to become a tap more common. You're not really going to see that with Minya, given that she is a limited character. But once more, uh, you up, beat Minya, even with the precision skill, didn't even get us below 50% stamina. But it is funny how history does repeat itself because what we're doing right now, like this isn't a first for BBS. We did the exact same thing when the Invincible meta was a thing for the very first time. Of course, we got uh, inflicted with confusion there. Doesn't really matter though. Let's see what happens. We grab the Soul Bomb. We're getting really lucky with the Soul Bombs here. Uh, but as I was saying, you know, back when Drugum and Tsukashima were super dominant, the only way to counter them is always to use the old Brave Battle characters that hopefully by that point became more common, and you build them with full defense, and you just try and get the transcendent advantage. And that's exactly what we're doing right now. You know, Yuha's not the most common character, but he has been in the game for almost two years now, and his banner's always been worth summoning on, and he was featured in the most recent end-of-year banner. And that's personally why I was able to get him max transcendent before. End-of-year banner, he was only 1-5, so I got very lucky with his dupes. I will say, though, I, I do like, I do like that we are in a female meta because, let's be honest, not like it's a big deal, it's a game. Uh, every meta Brave Bar character has just been males, right? The only female, like, time a female character was meta was Yachiru, right? And right now it's Orihime. You know, I'm glad she took the, the PP slot for the end of year banner. But it's still very weird that she's, like, a good Brave Bar character. But Meninja, again, I always saw being Brave Bowers. Always saw it being a counter to Orihime, which is not entirely a counter to her, but still a good option to go against her while also being a counter to the current captain meta as well. Mainly Yamamoto, right? And that's why I'm trying not to put Yamamoto against uh, Meninja because it's not going to look too good. We absolutely dominated their Meninja right there. You know, she has the persistent skill, but she's not even getting us under half stamina. Look at that. We're now under half stamina, but we're now taking 50% less damage. Once more, grabbing the Soul Bomb. Oh, yeah, I forgot we can't heal, right? Never mind. Orihime stopping us from healing. I was about to say, because I kind of forget that he can inflict Drain, right, and heal back up the full stamina, but uh, we have all these characters here that prevent the healing, which is kind of an OP skill because you don't even have to be attacking them. You just outright counter it. <laughs> it's like, which is kind of ridiculous. Our next two opponents does have a decent amount of stats here. We still have higher, but we'll see how it does go. Wouldn't be surprised here if our Yuha maybe does die, but hopefully he can do the job here. So we activated the boost. No idea. To be fair, it does look like they didn't activate the debuff. So you can see there, right, their Meninja is literally doing one damage to my Yuha. That's why, in my opinion, Yuha is still meta in the Brave Battle game modes. Because we naturally got the advantage there, right? My Yama stopped their Yuha from activating his boost. We debuffed them. And I believe their Orihime did use the SA2 debuff, but it was before we activated our boost. And at that point, we just had too much more stats. Even if the battle would have been close, or closer, they had no chance to be close because we had the stat advantage from the boost alone. But yeah, Yuha's been holding up. He's been holding up, right? The more, uh, you know, transcended Meninja that we see, like, if I see, like, a free fire, I mean, we've gone against a free fire, I believe, in this video, but if I see a max transcended Meninja, I'm probably not going to fight you, if I'm being honest, but look at that, look at that, nice and easily done, didn't keep track of the boost and debuff situation in this match, but no problem whatsoever. On to our next team, this, uh, potentially might be a close game, because their Meninja, I believe, is worked on, but they also have Chad, so we can't stop them. From activating a boost. So we used our boost. They debuffed us. So unfortunately our stats have been lowered. But I think we also debuffed them. I don't believe they got the boost advantage. Because I think if they did. The game would uh, would be over for us. Uh, we activated a sub though. That's great. We get to apply paralysis. If we can even inflict paralysis on any of these characters. I don't think we can. Uh, Meninja is the last character. She put up a good fight. But... For us, it meant no difference. It was a nice and easy game. No one died there. You'll have to see. And that was quite a worked on team as well. And for our final game, 
We have the Lad Mutt here, which has very similar stat number to us. 48,000 versus 50,000. Not super confident with this one, but we'll see how it does go. So then Meninja is 3-5, level 10 attack, defense, and focus. We have a good amount of stats here, right? Definitely a good amount of stats here. They're going with a full attack build. Makes sense. Their Orohime has focus. Full attack build. Okay. And then they have Chad. Again, Chad can become a problem because we can't stop him from activating the boost. So the hope here is to activate the boost after their debuff from Orohime. And hopefully we can activate our debuff after Chad uses boost. Let's find out and see how this match is going to play out. It might be over for us. We might enter here. Let's see how it goes though. They have the special strategy. So let's see what's going on. They activated their boost. Can we activate our debuff? We activated it now. Maybe activated it a bit too late. Orohime is now activated by skill. I think it's done for us. Menin is now activated the sub bomb. Oh, God. <laughs> Not looking too good. 80%. It's over. I mean, Yama was holding up, to be fair. He really was. Unfortunately for our last game, though. Yeah, maybe in that case, they had a bit too much stats. And again, teams like this, in my opinion, I kind of want to avoid. At least with my team, I don't unironically want to go against Chad. Because if Yuho was on their team, then I was guaranteed to make it a 3v2 and not allow them to activate their boost. And that would have gave us the advantage, right? So unironically, uh, my biggest threat with this particular team is Chad. Who would have thought? And what we've done with Yuha today, you can actually do with Chad. So Chad might be somewhat back in the Bray Battle meta to a certain extent. Understand he doesn't have a... Uh, you know, he doesn't go through invincibility, but he does have attribute advantage against Orihime, does have killer against Meninja. If your build would be tanky enough, you might be able to make him work. And in terms of, you know, boost SA2, there's no way to stop him from activating that boost unless for some reason you put Yama and get really lucky with Lacerate. Either way, though, that's the video for today showing that, you know, you don't need Meninja, but you also do need a good team. But that's kind of how it always is, right? If you don't have the new character, having the older characters worked on is usually enough. This is my team in Bray Battles. If I do get Meninja during her individual banner, would I use her? Probably. I would probably replace her for Yamamoto. I think having a team booster is too valuable to take out Yuha. And given that Meninja is almost a hard counter to Yama, having him is potentially a liability. But like I already mentioned, there isn't that many too, too much Meninja running around right now. Given that not everyone went down to zero on the banner, you'll get a few every now and then. But yeah, I'm able to spend my tickets nice and easily. Don't have to spend too much time refreshing or refreshing at all. And I'm still winning majority of my games. For the most part, we won every game there besides the last game, which I was fairly certain we were going to lose. So if you know you're going to lose, just don't attempt to fight them. Either way, hope you liked the video. Take care and peace.